Hey there guys, welcome to Cinema Recap. Thanks for joining us today. So, we're gonna take a look at the comedy drama film, One Wild Moment. Spoilers ahead. We open the movie on the absolutely gorgeous island of Corsica, where we meet two old friends on the start of their holiday together. One is Antoine, a conservative father who looks a lot like the French version of Dustin Hoffman. And the holiday is taking place at his family home, and he can't wait to get everybody back and show it off after what apparently has been years since his last return. The other father is Laurent, the cool dad, who looks like he's just glad to be in a beautiful location for the holidays. With them are Antoine's 17-year-old daughter Luna and Laurent's 18-year-old daughter Mary. Just to make it all easy for us to follow, Luna and Mary also happen to be best friends with one another. So, what we have here are two single dads with their basically age-appropriate daughters on holidays on a remote tropical island. Perfect setup for a little drama. They arrive at the holiday house, which Antoine's only too eager to show off. Typically though, the girls aren't that impressed. But the complaints don't stop there. Once inside, the two girls decide to point out pretty much everything that's wrong with this stunning home. If it's not the boar's head hanging in the kitchen, it's the fact that there's no reception anywhere. And if not that, it's the dead rat that they find. And if not that, well, they're two teenage girls, they spend a lot of time complaining. But Loren isn't having any of it. He tells them that they should be happy. They're in Corsica. They're young. Life is good. Laurent is the cool, fun dad type, and just to prove it, here's a clip of him dancing while cleaning, just trying to get the girls excited for a damn change. Unfortunately for Laurent, his friend Antoine can't join him in these celebrations. You see, where Laurent is divorced from his wife and truly single, Antoine's going through a divorce. Not that he's willing to admit that's what happened. He wanders down to an old grave in the home where he finds some reception, and then he decides to tell his teenage daughter and her friend about it. Naturally, this soon sees the two girls down there by the grave just so they can use the internet for a little. But don't worry, they're courteous and respectful towards the dead. They take funny photos on the grave instead. My bad. But the point is that they managed to get on Facebook for a few minutes and, wouldn't you know it, they found a party in the area that they want to go to. Well, Laurent is the cool dad, so he's more or less fine with his daughter and friend going out. They're on holidays after all. But then comes Antoine, the grump. He doesn't want him going out at all, but manages to get talked around to letting him stay out until 1.30 a.m., like it's some big deal. The girls are thrilled enough, but we get the sense that this curfew is made to be broken. That night, the girls get ready to go out, and here we learn a little bit about their approach to dating. Mary's the slightly older one, but also realistic. She just wants to meet a cute guy, have a little fun for a while. But Luna, the 17-year-old, is a romantic soul, and she just wants to find someone who she can fall in love with and love until they both die old and happy. Mary clearly thinks it's a little silly, though, and makes sure to tell her, too. <laughs> so, turns out that the girls might have slightly underplayed where they're going tonight. They tell their fathers that it's just a little beach gathering, and indeed, when they leave the house, they're dressed casually. But once alone in the car, they strip off into some club gear, and it looks like it's gonna be a big night. But before all that happens, we get another cool dad moment from Laurent. Luna's pretty taken with Laurent, and tells Mary in the car, although again, she just says that he's cool. Nothing weird to see here, guys. The girls end up at a club, and look to be having a good time. Meanwhile, the fathers stay home and lament that their little girls are growing up. This is where we see the key difference between the two guys. Where Antoine wants his little girl to stay little forever, Laurent knows that they're growing up and that he needs to start talking to them about sex and all that kind of stuff. But enough of that. The girls stay out past their bedtime and the two fathers aren't happy. They stay up and wait for the girls to come back. Which they do, but, you know, absolutely wasted. What should be an awkward moment is played for a laugh as both girls are too drunk to care about their fathers being mad at them. The two fathers get over it pretty fast though, and tomorrow they take their daughter's abseiling down a small waterfall into a lagoon. Luna doesn't want to go with her father, so Laurent takes her instead. And what we get here is a steamy moment between the two that sees Laurent cradling Luna as he helps her down and Luna seeming to really enjoy herself. Once they're all done and down in the water, Laurent helps Mary take off her wetsuit while Luna does her own. Not paying attention, Laurent looks across, spies on Luna taking off her bathing suit and, well, she flashes him her nipple. Not only does she flash him, but she seems to like it. She stares Laurent down as she slowly puts her clothes back on. All Laurent can try to do is ignore it. 
That night, the two fathers are out with their daughters walking the street. But again, the girls are trying to convince their fathers to let them go out. The fathers don't want their daughters to go out a second night in a row. But then Antoine sees a woman that he sort of knows, one whom he has a little crush on and wants to ask out. He figures now that the two girls can go out and have a little fun, but only if Laurent goes with him to watch, and this will leave him free to ask out that cute woman he likes. What a perfect plan. Laurent doesn't think so. And as soon as he gets to the party, he wants to leave. But his daughter and Luna convince him to hang around, at least for an hour, so they can have a little fun. And pretty soon, Laurent starts having some fun of his own. When a woman his age hits on him, they flirt and soon are dancing up a storm. Meanwhile, the two girls have found some boys of their own to have some fun with. But then Luna spots Laurent with the older woman, and she becomes upset. Distraught over seeing Laurent with an older woman, Luna goes to him and pretends to be drunker than she is demanding that he leave the older woman and take her home. Laurent doesn't want to go. Now it looks like it's the last thing he wants to do, but he has no choice. So he tells Luna to grab his daughter and they'll bail. Mary isn't ready to go home either. In fact, she wants to sneak back to a boy's house. So she manages to convince Luna to stay out and distract her drunk father so that she can sneak off. And Luna's only too happy to do it. What a good friend. Meanwhile, Antoine's on a date with that cute girl, unfortunately. The conversation soon turns to his failed marriage, and despite how much Antoine clearly likes this woman, it's obvious that he's not over his ex-wife just yet. But no matter, because we cut back to the beach party to see Luna and Laurent on the dance floor having a little too much fun. Nothing bad yet, but based on those moves of his, we sense that's about to change. And indeed, after the party, the two are at the beach walking off their drunken states. Laurent wants to sit down and relax, but Luna has other ideas. She wants to go for that late night swim. But Laurent isn't having it. Not that this stops Luna. She starts stripping in front of him. First down to her underwear and then completely naked. Laurent tells her to put some clothes on and that he isn't going in. But she ignores him, teases him, flirts with him as she's running down to the water's edge with no clothes. Laurent tries to deny her, but Luna's very persuasive, seemingly with no choice. Laurent strips down to his boxers and wades into the water. Luna loves this, and then she tries to get him to take his boxers off. He pushes her away, but taken over by the moment, she jumps at Laurent and tries to kiss him. Laurent does the right thing here, a rare instance, and pushes her away, telling her that she's crazy, undeterred. Luna runs to the water where she starts to cry and apologize for what she did. She's claiming it's just her being upset with her parents getting that divorce. Laurent, feeling bad now, comforts her. But this just leads to a whole other set of issues. She forces herself on him, pushes herself on him, straddles him, and where Laurent is trying to say no. The man has only so much self-control. Pretty soon, he and his best friend's 17-year-old daughter are rolling in the sand, breaking just about every rule in the book. Oh, and to make matters even worse, once it's all said and done and they're laying together, Luna decides to confess her love for Laurent. It's around this point where we see Laurent starting to realize the gravity of the situation that he found himself in. Maybe it's a little too late though, Laurent. He knows it too. He arrives back at the house with Luna looking as guilty as sin. This situation is made worse by Antoine, who has a damned gun loaded and ready to fire. But it's not because he wants to shoot the guy, even though he probably should. There are wild boars on the property, and he's using that gun to hunt them. Oh no, guys. Something tells me this isn't going to end well for poor Laurent. Okay. Things get off to a bad start the next morning, when Laurent is innocently brushing his teeth, only for Luna to pop up from behind and start smothering him in kisses. He tells her she cray-cray, and she needs to stop. But it looks like that she missed that memo, or is ignoring it completely. But don't worry, though. Even though Antoine is blind to the affair happening right in front of his eyes, Mary isn't. She sees that something is up immediately and even confronts Luna about it. It's later that day and the happy fathers are at the beach, having a perv on all the women in bikinis. Antoine especially really gets his perv on here. That is until he reaches his own daughter. She sees Laurent coming and we just know that she has ideas. And indeed, she's asking Laurent to rub some lotion on her. He tells her to ask her father, but Antoine doesn't want to. Looks like Laurent has no choice. He rubs that lotion on, but he's not looking happy about it. 
Luna, though, just can't help herself, and she tries to slide his hand onto her butt with her own father right there. Laurent freaks out and runs into the water, but Luna just chases him. She follows him out into the water and tries to talk to him, but he doesn't want any of it. He's trying to avoid her, swimming out as deep as he can, hoping to dissuade this girl. But she keeps coming on to him, confessing her love for him. And Laurent just keeps on trying to tell her to leave him alone. It's a good argument, but I get the feeling she isn't going to heed his advice. And Mary isn't helping any of this, sitting at the edge of the water, watching the two argue. Yeah, she definitely knows that something's going on. And still, things continue to get worse for Laurent. He has a fight with his daughter that night, who goes out even after he tells her not to. And then when he tries to go to sleep later, Luna sneaks into his bed. He tries to kick her out, but she screams and tells him that she'll tell her father if he does kick her out. With no choice, Loren agrees to let her sleep in his bed so long as she doesn't touch him. The two fall asleep, and it's not until the next morning when Loren wakes up and realizes that Luna's still there. He freaks out, worried that his daughter is going to come in and see. And he's begging Luna to leave, but she only will on one condition. Luna's convinced that Laurent loves her, and she refuses to leave that room until he admits it, with no choice again. He tells Luna that he loves her, several times, just to make sure. Luna then happily sneaks from the room. But not before Mary sees her doing it. Luna knows that she knows and tries to explain, but Mary doesn't want to hear it. Furious with her friend, Mary sleeps downstairs. But this just has Antoine asking what she's doing. When she responds rudely, he gets furious and seeks out Laurent to put his daughter in line. Laurent's just happy that he's mad about this and not, you know, the fact that he's sleeping with her. It's later that day now, and the gang are down at the beach. Antoine and his daughter are trying to rent a jet ski, but neither of them have a license. Luna's distraught that she can't go, when suddenly, Antoine has an idea. Surely, Laurent has a license to drive a jet ski? Laurent isn't paying attention and tells him that he does. But then he realizes this means he's going to have to take Luna out by himself. He tries to backtrack, but it's too late. And the next thing he knows, it's just he and Luna out on the water having a good time. And it looks like it too. Despite his reservations, he's a little too flirty with Luna here for his own good. And what's worse, we have Laurent's daughter Mary sitting on the beach watching the whole thing. And on and on it goes. That night, the gang are playing cards and Luna can't help but play footsies with Laurent, even though her father's like right there. But he's an idiot, so he doesn't notice. Mary does though. Ah, where is my chauffeur? And she storms out, announcing that she's leaving for the night. Antoine becomes distracted and leaves also, leaving the two lovebirds alone. This time, however, Laurent decides to finally do what he should have done at the start of this movie and put a stop to this obsession that she has with him. She tries to jump on his lap and kiss him, even though her father's right there in the other room. This time, finally, Luna takes the hint. Beyond distraught, she storms off in tears. Unfortunately, this just has her going to see her father where she confesses to him that she's in love. But the man whom she's loving has broken her heart. Antoine's actually kind of happy to hear this, not wanting to think about his own daughter dating. But then she reveals that the guy who broke her heart is a little older, like 45 years old. And that's too much for Antoine to handle. He goes to Laurent and tells him everything. Well, only that he knows his daughter is sleeping with an older man. He's begging Laurent for help. But Laurent tries to defuse the situation and convince him to just leave it alone. But Antoine can't do this. He tries Mary next, who tells him too that she doesn't know who the older man is. Antoine's not giving up so easily. He has to know who his daughter's sleeping with. He tries to break into her phone. It's not working. Lucky then, he's got another rather genius plan. He decides to enlist the help of Laurent. He knows how much his daughter admires Laurent and figures that if Laurent was to take her out and get her drunk, that she might confess to him. And yeah, he's literally trying to persuade the man who's sleeping with his daughter to take his daughter out so he might find out who she's sleeping with. Ah, recipe for disaster. Laurent tries to turn him down, but then Antoine throws a hissy fit, and he ends up having no choice but to oblige. And indeed, he takes Luna out that night for dinner and drinks, but this time, he manages to keep it in his pants. He spends the dinner telling her that it's over and that she can't tell her father. Luna looks a little bit upset, but is also looking like she maybe is starting to come around, and maybe Laurent might even get out of this thing without his friend finding out and possibly murdering him for it. Well, they return home, 
to find Antoine with that gun. He's hunting down those boars in his garden, but he's frantic and wild and Laurent has to step in to help him. As he does it, Antoine's pressing him to tell him what he found out when he had dinner with Luna. Who is the guy? Laurent tries to deflect, but eventually he has no choice but to give him a name. That's it. The DJ. Antoine knows this has to be the answer. He just knows it. So sure is he that he goes to that club that night and follows the DJ into the bathroom and beats the crap out of him. He doesn't even give him a chance to explain, which he should have because the DJ is screaming now that he's gay, which makes Antoine realize that maybe this isn't the guy after all. Now the next day, Laurent tries to apologize to his daughter for what he did, but things don't go very well and she doesn't want to hear it. A final attempt and she just has one thing to say to him. Oh well, maybe she'll forgive him in the sequel. Anywho, later that day, Antoine and Laurent go hunting with some of Antoine's friends. The two are alone in the wilderness, no witnesses. Antoine's fully armed and still steaming about that mystery man sleeping with his daughter. So, it's a perfect time for Laurent to confess what he's done, which he does by the way. Credit to Antoine though, rather than shooting his friend in the face as we all thought he would. He instead just tackles him to the ground and the two wrestle around for a bit, but then we cut to Antoine trudging from the forest by himself. He tells the others that Laurent went home by himself and they leave it at that. Well, where the fathers weren't able to make up, at least the daughters were. They end in coming together and Luna manages to apologize to Mary for what she did. But Mary, being perhaps the only adult in the entire movie, forgives her. It's not Luna's fault. Laurent is supposed to be the adult here. He should have known better. And then to celebrate their refound friendship, they go out partying together. Laurent arrived home late that night after a long and lonely trudge through the forest. As soon as he gets home, he starts to pack, looking like he wants to leave ASAP. But he falls asleep and doesn't wake up until the morning. When he realizes what time it is, he hurries downstairs just in time to find Antoine sitting in a pensive silence on the front porch and to see the two girls arriving home after a big night out. Luna sees the bruises on her father's and Laurent's faces and asks what happened. And it looks like Antoine might confess that he knows everything, but then he has a change of heart. Luna smiles, Laurent smiles, Antoine smiles. They all seem to have decided that what happened wasn't that big of a deal. Luna's no longer a little girl, and Antoine has to let her leave that nest and discover the world for herself. Although to be fair, I don't really think that's the moral we as the audience should be taking from this movie. But uh, they all seem to be happy about it, so why not? The end. And that was it guys for our recap of One Wild Moment. Produced by Antra Sean Adloup. <laughs> Sorry if I can't pronounce that. And released in 2015. Directed by Jean-Francois Richet. It stars Vincent Castle, Francois Clouset, Elise Izaz, and Lola Lelan. Opinion time, guys. Who do you think was really in the wrong here? Let us know with that hashtag cinema recap in the comments, because we interested. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.